Good evening and welcome to Shandon Presbyterian's Monday Thursday service on this Holy Week. You are welcome to join us wherever you are, and we are glad that you are here. This Holy Week, after this evening, there will be a Good Friday meditation published around midday tomorrow, so look for that. And you are invited to join us for Easter worship Sunday at 1030. We will be online again. And all of our services can be found online on the first page of our website or on our YouTube channel. And we hope you will join us in celebration on Sunday morning. But as we are gathered here this evening, let us take some time to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Let's take a few moments for silence. Take a few deep breaths. Calm and center yourself, quiet yourself, preparing your heart and mind for this evening service of remembrance. I also invite you, if you have before you, our liturgy of preparation, I invite you to join me in our prayer together. Servant God, we come with humble and contrite hearts we are amazed at your servant spirit that cares for us and upholds us. Be with us this evening as we remember your Passover meal shared with your disciples. Be with us in the breaking of bread, in the sharing of the cup, in the praying of prayers, in the very act of remembering. Fill us with your humble spirit, that we may serve others as abundantly as we are served by you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
let us join now in our call to worship together. Why is this night different? Though we are scattered in homes, apartments, households, still we can gather in God's heart. Why is this worship different? We cannot gather as God's household, yet we can still find ourselves together in God's heart and love. Why is this meal different? Alone, with family, with just our pets, we begin to understand the weariness, the uncertainty, the questions which sat around the table long ago with Jesus and his friends. Why is this night, this worship, this meal, the same? We are still God's beloved, who is with us in these moments, these days, these nights. We are still the followers of Jesus, who would wash our hearts of our doubts and fears. We are still comforted by the Spirit, who blesses the meal we will share this night. nights long ago, we face choices. Will we continue to live in fear or step out in faith? Will we trust in the one who is with us or listen to the hollow words around us? Let us confess our lives, our emptiness, 
our worries to the one who calls us, feeds us, redeems us, as we pray together, saying, It has all disappeared, our God, our certainty of how life was to be, our daily activities and jobs and routines. It has all been snatched away from us, our lunches with friends, our family gatherings on porches and in backyards. It has all become so fearful, those simple things like going to the store, giving another a hug, attending a concert, a sporting event, or even a worship service. Yet this feeling, this uncertainty, these fears are exactly what you experienced on that night so long ago, brother of our hearts. All your certainty dissipated as easily as that crowd that cheered you just a few days before. Your hopes, your dreams, your desires for your friends have been snatched away by those powers and circumstances beyond your control. Even a simple last meal with your closest friends was full of doubts, questions, recriminations, as you huddled isolated from the world. So now, fill us with your presence, spirit of that night and this night and all nights. Fill us with that grace which enables us to look beyond our fears, to live as people of faith. Fill us with that love which strengthens us to care for the most vulnerable around us rather than the most powerful. Fill us with that hope which is never quarantined, never isolated, never separated from us in these and all the moments to come. Let us continue in silent confession. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. On this loneliest of nights, on this holiest of nights, here is the good news that we need. God is with us. Just as with those Hebrew ancestors so long ago, God is with us. Just as with Jesus and his friends, that night we remember tonight. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. In remembrance, we are together, though scattered. In remembrance, we share bread wherever we are. In remembrance, we drink of the cup of grace, whoever we are. In remembrance, we will trust, we will hope, we will live, we will follow. Amen.
A reading from Psalm 116, verses 1 through 10 and 12 through 15. I, the Lord, because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, the pangs of Sheol lay hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteousness. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation. I call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people, precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his faithful ones. And our gospel reading comes from John chapter 13. Verses 1 through 15. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from the world and go to the Father. He loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judah's son of Simeon Iscariot to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him for this reason. He said, Not all of you are clean. After he washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set an example for you. And also chapter er, verse 33. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. But this everyone will know, that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
This is one empty room. Here I'll show you, or Susanna, my handy camera woman, will show you just how empty this room is. And I'll confess, this is not the first time I've preached to this empty room. I believe almost every time I've ever preached here at Shandon, the night before, sadly, often late Saturday night, I'm standing right here in this empty sanctuary, standing right here preaching to an empty room, practicing my sermon, looking out on these empty pews and envisioning you being there the next day. Funny things, we Presbyterians, we always sit, if not on the exact same pew, in the exact same place, in the same general pew and seat area. Preaching to this empty room, it helps set the sermon in my mind and in my heart. But preaching during the pandemic, I'll be honest, it feels even more empty, really empty, because I know tomorrow you won't be here in your pews. This is indeed an empty room. It's a little eerie, definitely lonely and sad, maybe even scary, for we don't know when you'll be able to fill up these beloved pews again and truly, physically pass the peace. From this empty room to the empty upper room, I'll give that to the pandemic. Not sure I've thought of just how empty the room was for Jesus that night until now. Even surrounded by the disciples, his dear friends he had loved. Imagine Peter is right beside him, Judas close or some ways away. Who would you want at the Last Supper? Gathered around the Passover table with Jesus' beloved disciples, the room was still empty of what Tom Schumann has called, and we confessed earlier during the prayer of confession just moments ago, Jesus hopes, dreams, desires for his friends, snatched away by the powers and circumstances beyond his control. And the clock was ticking. The hour had come. Jesus knew in his heart of hearts it was time for him to leave this world and return to God the Father. While accepted, Jesus knew then of the betrayal, denial, beating, and death to come. Even fully divine, as fully human, Knowing that's on the horizon would leave an empty pit in anyone's stomach. Wonder if Jesus, deep inside, cried out silently the prayer of Psalm 116. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold of me. I suffered distress and anger. And indeed, isolation and loneliness had set in as well, as he knew this was the very last supper with his friends. He loved and would love to the end. Plus, you've got Judas sitting right down there at the end of the table. Talk about awkward emptiness. It's just as Schumann shares for Jesus. Even a simple last meal with your closest friends was full of doubts, questions, recriminations as you huddled isolated from the world. Empty, downright empty 
in the upper room. What though does Jesus do in the empty room? He reaches out in love to those he loved, breaking bread, sharing the cup, and washing their feet. As empty as he may have been, he takes very human, physical things, cup, bread, hands, feet, and with great humanness and great humility, he stoops to share in service to his friends. On our quest west, we do a foot washing at the Grand Canyon. And unless you've washed someone else's dirty, dusty, grimy feet from desert hiking, I don't know that you can really appreciate fully what Jesus did. He wasn't washing our pedicured, daily washed and lotioned feet. It took a great deal of humility and love to serve the disciples in this way. And he insists on washing Peter's feet and even washes Judas's feet as well. And Jesus doesn't just stop there. He calls the disciples to wash one another's feet to serve others with just the same love and humility. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. In our Lenten Wilderness Devotional, Lauren Wright Pittman draws it this way in her piece, Drifting Seeds on the Front of Your Bulletin. Jesus says, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I imagine Jesus splashing around in the water to cause the resulting ripples of his action. Just as you put your toe in the water and waves ripple out. Jesus sees this moment as a center point of change. If each of the twelve understood and humbled themselves in service to others, and the recipients of their kindness did the same, the ripples of impact would be unending. Love going on and on and on and on forever. And just in case the disciples haven't gotten it, in the empty upper room, Jesus draws the evening down saying, I am about to leave you, and where I am going, you cannot come. Jesus assures them, saying, but I've got a new commandment. It's a hallmark commandment, one to follow, to be known far and wide as my disciples. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Love everyone, no matter how dirty their feet are, no matter what they may have said or done. Jesus' closing remarks are all love, all about love, and all about loving one another. Love, 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 love one another foundational advice to the disciples in all that emptiness of the upper room, and maybe especially to us too, looking to the cross that tomorrow brings from the vantage point of an empty room, a fevered call in this pandemic time of distancing, isolation, fear, anxiety, and unknown futures to reach out in love for one another. A love that can fill this empty sanctuary, your sanctuary, your rooms, your homes, with love overflowing. A love that surrounds, sustains, and uplifts those loves hugging them back from the dark abyss that can surround and envelop 
a love that Kate Bowler, a Duke Seminary professor with lifetime cancer, prays we can all share. She writes, I do hope that every person feels the permission to say, I'm at the edge of what I know. And in the face of the sea of abyss, someone out there, please show me love. Because that's, to me, the only thing that fills up the darkness. It's somehow in there, the feeling that I am not for no reason. And that doesn't mean anything better is going to happen to me. But in the meantime, that I will know that we all are deeply and profoundly loved wherever we are. That's my hope for everybody. On this Monday, Thursday, that's our only hope, Jesus Christ. In an empty upper room with the cross looming large on the horizon, where our one and only hope, Jesus rises from the depths of that emptiness to reach out in humility and love and calls us to go and love likewise. May we rise as well to go and love as we journey towards the cross and the unchartered waters ahead. God speed on our journey.
continue our worship now in the Memorial Garden of Shandon Presbyterian Church as we celebrate together the Sacrament of Holy Communion as we approach the table of our Lord. On Maundy Thursday, this is a good setting for communion, the intimacy of our homes. You do not have to gather in large numbers on Maundy Thursday because it was a small gathering of Jesus and his disciples it was a time of intimate sharing, a time when Jesus took the Jewish symbols of the faith and reinterpreted them in terms of his life as Messiah and his coming death upon the cross. It is good to be together in worship in our homes, knowing that we are together though we are apart. Let us approach the table of our Lord, not because we deserve, but because God is gracious and merciful. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that though we are isolated by our fears and though our worries try to capture us, we are people who live our life in your good hands and in your loving arms. We thank you for the church we enjoy. We thank you for the faith we embrace. We thank you for your love and mercy in Jesus Christ. Be, please be with us this evening as we partake of the sacrament. May it strengthen us, may it embolden us, may it give us poise and calm, may it give us the courage to live every day for you. Eternal Father, we thank you that you are with us this night, and we give you praise. In Christ's name we pray, and, in the, and as we pray, we remember together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, as I give it to you this night, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in a similar manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and after he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, This cup, is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Drink all ye of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us now, if you would like to pause, you can do that, or if you would like just to partake, serve one another the elements of the sacrament. We partake of Holy Communion. We thank God for each other. We thank God for our friends in Christ at church. We're used to hugging them and being close. On this Holy Week, we must stay apart. But we thank God for those who support us in the faith. We remember them and we name them in our prayers. And we give thanks this night. We, thank, we are thankful for the Jesus who loved us so much to give us friends in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that in the body of Christ broken upon the cross, we are made whole. We thank you that in his blood shed upon the cross for the salvation of the world, we are cleansed and washed and are clean and free. We thank you for a mercy we will we'll never deserve 
a mercy we will never understand, a mercy that will be for us the anchor of our life. We thank you for new beginnings. We thank you for the gift of the Church of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your amazing grace, your steadfast kindness that is for now and is forever. In Christ's name, amen. That evening, the disciples went with Jesus from that upper room around the southern perimeter of Jerusalem to the Mount of Olives to the Garden of Gethsemane, and they stayed with Jesus until he was betrayed and arrested. Before they left the upper room, though, they sang a hymn together, and that's the way our service this evening will end. We will sing a hymn together. We will finish in silence. We will meditate upon the love of God. God bless you and keep you. Amen. <laughs>